There are certain verses in the Bible that are honestly a bit complicated. Uh, for example, Romans 7.15. Uh, here's what Romans 7:15 says. This is again the Apostle Paul who's writing to the church in Rome, and he says this, which by the way, I just love the honesty of Paul. He says this: For I do not understand what I am doing because I do not practice what I want to do, but I do what I hate. And then later on, there's this tension. Like, look at this, verse 21. So I discovered this law. When I want to do what is good, evil is present within me. For in my inner self, I delight in God's law, but I see a different law in the parts of my body. And he goes on and on, and he's got this tension that's here. And it leaves us with this kind of theological thought or question that we might be wrestling with. Well, hold on. I thought the Holy Spirit lived inside of me. And so if the Holy Spirit lives inside of me, how can sin also be living inside of me? And so there's this kind of big question. Can sin and the Holy Spirit live and coexist together? I want to talk and define a couple terms here. Uh, one, there's this thought of sanctification. What is sanctification? Sanctification is simply the process in which we're becoming more and more like Jesus. Now, we get a little bit more technical here. So you have sanctification, but sanctification can be split into two categories. One of those categories is definitive sanctification. What does that mean? It means that God sees us not as we are today, but he sees us through the lens of Jesus. So, we, so when God looks at us, he's actually seeing us through Christ. This is Paul's language of the New Testament. Every time he says in Christ, the Greek word there is in Christo, it means that we are wrapped up in the sphere and in the existence of Jesus, the, the risen one. Why is this so important? Because what Jesus does for us is he mediates, he makes a way for you and I right now in fullness to be in the very presence of God and simultaneously, this is the, the next word, we talked about definitive sanctification. The next word is progressive sanctification. That on this side of eternity, we are still working out our holiness. We are still in the process of transformation. So definitive sanctification. It's this idea that God sees us through Christ and right now when he sees us, we are definitively wholly sanctified, fully sanctified. Progressive sanctification is and. It's not a but, it's an and. And it says this, that we are in the process of final sanctification, that we are working these things out. So when we jump back to a passage like Romans 7, 15, we get an insight into this tension. This is what Paul's saying. He's like, listen, um, I know <laughs> that I am a child of God. Like, I'm definitively sanctified. And yet, there is a part of me that is still being worked out. There is the after effect, the impact of sin, that even though Jesus has fully conquered sin and death, that the impact of sin, the consequences of sin, are still working itself out in me. And so what I need to do is practice holiness. What I actually have to do is practice the life of Christ. I have to be committed to these things. Notice the language what Paul says in verse 15. He says, I do not understand what I'm doing because, notice this, I do not practice what I want to do. In other words, what he's saying, if we inverted this, he's saying like, if you want to do the right things, if you want to do the things that the Holy Spirit is leading you to do, it is a combination of one, being led by the Spirit, but then two, that we in obedience follow the Spirit. We have to practice these things. I want to take a, a few verses back into Romans 6, starting in verses 12. And, and this is how actually Paul sets up this entire thing. He sets it up this way. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. This is an imperative, therefore. So what is the therefore, therefore? Well, anytime you see it, therefore, you probably need to read a few verses before this. This is what it starts at in verse six. For we know that our old self, catch this, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin since a person who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, union with Christ in Christo, we believe that we will also live with him because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for, catch this, all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, in light of all of this, 
Do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires and do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. I just want to point this out. This is the the last idea that um, the idea of practicing this, it's intentionality. And it means this, that our bodies have been redeemed by Jesus, that they are the temple of God. This is what Ephesians 2 talks about. So this is the tragedy. When we allow our bodies to be submitted to sin, to the old self, right? Um, we're actually allowing our bodies to become weapons of unrighteousness. That's what Paul says in Romans 6, 12 through 14. Instead, our bodies are the living, breathing temple of God. And so we give it over not to sin, but we... Um, allow it, the process of sanctification, and give it over to holiness. And when we do this, we engage in a type of cosmic warfare, a warfare against the flesh that um, wants us to do things that are contrary to the ways of the Spirit. But what the Spirit is actually doing is redeeming the flesh. The Spirit of God is actually regaining our true humanity, redeeming our true humanity. And so to kind of finish this off, can sin and the Holy Spirit uh, live in coexistence? Um, well, yes and no. No, in that the Holy Spirit, when, when we submit ourselves to King Jesus, the Spirit rules and leads us. But yes, in the fact that there is the consequence of sin on our bodies that we have to overcome through the power of the Spirit because of the Son, Jesus Christ, and unto the honor of the Father. 